Uh, good morning to everybody. My name is Fred Richards. I am the oldest of Maud K. Terry. Uh, she is my grandmother. My name is Stan Gale, and I'm the grandson of Daniel Gale and, and Elsie Gale, the owners of the property, my grandparents. Back in the 30s, a young Maud Terry used to go from her Eastfield property down to the water in Sag Harbor, and she crossed this 20-acre parcel of land, an old Indian trail, as a matter of fact. And creatively, she found a way to contact my grandmother, Elsie Gale, was on the deed. And Maud thought, what a wonderful place for my friends and brethren and family from Brooklyn to come out and buy a lot. So she approached my grandparents, and sure enough, my father had come home from the war. And uh, in the 40s and 50s, he began working with Maud Terry on a collaborative basis to see if Maud and her friends and community, Maud could bring them out and Dad would work with her to sell them individual parcels. The two worked together and finally Ms. Terry requested that could she acquire the remaining 100 parcels that were still out there in Azure Rest. Mrs. Terry selected the name Azure Rest after considering Heavenly Peace, Blue Rest, and Blue Haven, and Azure Rest. From these descriptions and phrases, the name Azure Rest was then coined. Azure Rest streets were named by Mrs. Terry in honor of her family and the heritage of African Americans and Native Americans in Sag Harbor. The Indian trails became Terry Drive, Richards Drive, and Meredith Avenue for members of Mrs. Terry's family. Walker Avenue and Milton Avenue memorialized black pilots of whaling ships. Cuffey Drive honored an old Sag Harbor Native American family, family of whaler Jason James Cuffey and son Nathan J. Cuffey. Later, at the insistence of the Gale family, Mrs. Terry, along with James Smith and Dorothy Spaulding, attempted to sell all of the lots, and to date, all of the lots are sold. <music> to 11963. I know you know that other zip code, but we're 11963 with the village of Sag Harbor, the town of East Hampton, and we are now in Azure Rest, and we are in the home of the Arringtons, the Williams, the Rees, Gail, G-A-Y-L-E, and Joe Graves, the Davises, Fitzgerald, Jerry, Bramwell, the Cotmans, the St. Bernards, so we welcome you to the home of Derry and Hamill Willoughby. Thank you for hosting us today. You're most welcome. You're welcome. And we are delighted to have you. We want to give a shout out to Ray and to Charles, our cameramen, par excellence. So tell me about the journey. This has been my favorite place to live, summer, winter, spring, <laughs> and fall. But when did you first purchase land to even well, start? I will tell you when I was first introduced to Sag Harbor. Please. And that was in the mid 50s. And I had two friends, Terry and Fred Richards. And their parents were Dr. Uh, Fred Richards and Dr. Iris Richards. Yes. And they invited me to come to Sag Harbor. And that's when I fell in love with Sag Harbor. All right. In 1973, they came to Derry and I and said, we have some land you are going to purchase. Mm. You are going to purchase. I said, I don't have any money. I don't care. You <laughs> are going to purchase. 
and we purchased the land in 1973. Wow. And so, Derry, you came along with him. You, did you fall in love at first sight, too? Well, initially, land was offered to my parents in the 40s and oh 50s mm -hmm. through the Richards. But my parents chose to go to Connecticut for the summer. Okay. So that took care of that. But in, I guess in the back of my mind, or Howell's mind, when they threatened us with our lives, <laughs> we decided we'd better purchase a piece of land down here. Um, so in 73, you purchase land. Mm -hmm. 98, you get your certificate of occupancy. You move in in 1999. And what happened was, initially, Terry Richards, the younger of the Richards brothers, had talked us into doing different things and we said, well, we'll just sell the land. And he said, build a summer house, see if you like it, and if you don't, then sell everything. So we built the house and we are now living here permanently. Does and that I, answer the question? I think you like it. So that's good. So Dr. Hamill, this is the village of San Carver. As we drive into Azure Rest, it says an historically African-American community. I'm 25 years here, you're now 40 years here. I want to first thank both of you for being part of my village and my family's village, pouring into our family. But what else is a village experience for you? Now you've been here 40 years, do you see generations that you have poured into and who also have poured into you? Well, I think one of the most important things about Sag Harbor and Azure S and the Sands is the ability to be with friends and family. And many of the people I've known since early childhood, wow. Fred and Terry Richards, the Bythewoods, and Dan, <clears throat> Dan and uh, David Bythewood. And we used to come periodically, and the most important thing, we used to bring our children. Yes. And that was really an exciting thing. And the thing that I remember most with, with the children was the Labor Day weekend. Yes. And at that time, the kids used to spend almost nights on the beach. And on the Sunday night, there was the fire. Mm. And we would have a fire on the beach and everyone would gather, families and friends. And the ability to be here, feel safe, and to be with people who loved us, people who were friends, family, and had a caring for all, all the people in the, sa the Sands area. That's awesome. So safety, village, but we also have a sisterhood that's intergenerational. I mean, we'll grab each other and go out for a bite to eat. What are some remembrances of favorite places and things for you to do? Well, I'll tell you the women's night or ladies night mm -hmm. quote um, that we've had over the years over at Olivia White's house. Yes. And then uh, Anne Morrow had it. Yes. I mean, that, that brings back good memories. But getting back to what Hamill was saying, you never had to worry about your children. Even though our kids were older mm -hmm. when they arrived here, they were in preteens. Okay. I would say. But you just never worried because everyone knew everyone else's child. And it seems like that generation is so close. I see them on the beach. Talk to us about their grown children. Do you think they'll continue the legacy and continue to come back to Sag Harbor? Without a doubt. Without oh. a doubt. And I think also I've been blessed because we have had some wonderful neighbors. Yeah. I have uh, Susan and <clears throat> Keffer Burns. Yes. They've been lovely. We also had... Uh, Sue J. <laughs> That's right, put it there. <laughs> and, and family. And, yeah. and family. <laughs> yes. And across the street, Cynthia Bonds. Right. And Cookie. Cookies, uh, Cookie and David and Mel. And they've all been wonderful uh, neighbors. We, we were always getting along and we always, the most important thing, we looked out for each other. Exactly, and continue to do that. So as we had a pool party this past weekend and people talked about you for generations pouring into black men in medicine. You did it for my son now. So what is the black history importance for you? Pouring into black men, pouring into young black women. What does that mean to you, the significance? Well, I've been mentoring in Sag Harbor and mentoring at Harlem Hospital and now at Stony Brook. 
And the most important thing in mentoring, and especially young black people, is that you're giving them your experience and your knowledge and hope that you make them a better person. And what you expect is nothing. Mm -hmm. That they will also, in turn, mentor. And I think that's an important aspect of being an adult and especially a black male. That's awesome. What do you hope young black women or other black women learn from you? Well, what I've seen, I don't know if they're necessarily learning it from me, but what I have seen is the, the term is overused, but sisterhood mm -hmm. of a lot of the, the generation below us. Mm -hmm. And they've had their trials and tribulations, but they've all come together. And they're there for each other, whether someone lives in Chicago yes. or Florida or wherever. They're there for that person. So that's important. What do you hope people remember as a couple? How many years of marriage, first of all? Oh, uh, well, she. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, let's see. What she, she has been married uh, this year, will be our 59th year. Wow. Are you right? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a wow. That's an exclamation. What's the seek what are two secrets to a successful marriage? Well, you know, the people say that uh, I took her to uh, to Hawaii for the 25th year and on the 59th I'm going to go back and get her. <laughs> no, but that's I, a just a redhead joke. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I think the most important important thing is being respectful and secondly a compromise if you can't be respectful and compromise things can be difficult and uh, here we are at 59 years and uh, awesome. I sometimes wonder how we did it what would you say I would say be, just be honest just if something happens and today's a perfect day mm -hmm. um, just be honest with each other I love it. Hold no secrets, but put it out there. And then you work, if it's a problem, then you work it out. Final That's question. It. What do you hope folks learn or know about Sag Harbor? Well, I think that one of the important aspects is that it is a black historical area. And that kind of initiates from Eastville, where many of the homes there were built in the 19th century, and they're still here. But the aspect that we were able to, in this village, to have a black community and to be here and felt safe, and that we're still trying to maintain the integrity of the area and to keep it that is a friendly area and people respect us and, and will take care to make sure that we are all people and the racism that we're having in the, in the United States and the democracy in the United States, this aspect is really determining many different things that are happening throughout the world. Tell us the names of your children and what do you hope we will remember about the Willoughby family? We have Kerry Kim Jackson, who's married to Bernard Jackson, and Kelly Lynn Willoughby, who is married to Kelvin Williams. And, you know, I just want people to realize we are a typical, average African American family who has survived under the circumstances. And we pray that, as our parents prayed for us, things will be better for them. But they are activists, so we know things will be better for them. And the word? Well, I think the most imper important word is hope. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that there will be changes and that the con we'll ha we will have a continued fight f forever. Okay. But I hope sooner or later the world the people will understand get the message 
Well, thank you for sharing this time with me. This has been awesome, and thank you for sharing this time with us. We're thank in the home you. of Dr. Hamill and Darry Willoughby and family, and we're in Azure West, a historically African-American community in the village of Sag Harbor. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And we are in the home of the Arringtons. So thank you so much for doing this and welcome. This is our 65th anniversary coming up for Azure West. Tell us when you came here, why you came here. Well, <clears throat> we bought the property first. I think it was in 19, maybe 75 or something, 76. I don't remember exactly, but we started building our ha this house in 1977. And it was completed, I think, between 77 and 78. And um, Michelle was 12 years old when we built the house. And my other daughter was, Angie was 15? Mm -hmm. 15. So you moved in teenagers. What was it like for you from Brooklyn, coming to the, out to Santa Harbor? What was the experience like when you first came? And I certainly see what it's like now. Well, there was definitely a sense of freedom that I did not have in Brooklyn. So in other words, if I got on my bicycle, I could ride to town, I could ride to Sag Harbor Hills, I could ride to Nineveh, and I would meet other kids on the way. Mm -hmm. And there were, I, I would say there were about 50 of us in that little generation, and we would meet out here. We only had dirt roads here yeah. back then. Mm -hmm. And so everybody, the boys had their dirt bikes and the girls had theirs, and we would ride around, and there were yards that we could cut through. Um, it was really a freedom that my parents couldn't we couldn't have in the city, but we could have out here. Yes. So that was that was a nice, uh, it was a fun experience. And it's wonderful to watch your group of who were teenagers then actually be adults and grow up. So now you have children and family. Marissa, what's it like for you now? You're a teenager, the age your mother moved out here. What's it like for you? Um, it's pretty fun. I have like a lot of freedom and I can do a lot. So do you have the city and the Sag Harbor experience? Do you like both or which? Yeah, I like both. I like having the best of both worlds. And so you go into school out here as well? Yeah. So have you developed new friends? That you have, do you have summer friends or do you have year round yeah. friends? School you'll be wonderful. Mm -hmm. So Virginia Arrington, certainly been looking at the picture of your husband, your beloved husband. There's a bench dedicated now on our new boardwalk. We remember just the admiration and love you have for each other. What are some remembrances as husband and wife you had from Sag Harbor? Oh, <laughs> so many. 40th I mean, wedding anniversary? We did our 40th wedding anniversary here. We did Michelle's wedding here. Oh, wow. Um, we always had parties and people uh, coming and going. Uh, it's sort of like an uh, open house, which it still is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for opening your house for us. <laughs> we love you. And, um, uh, Mr. Redhead, uh, Dr. Dr. Redhead, who used to come every day and go swimming with mm -hmm. my husband when he was out here. So they had formed a little group with the, the guys they would swim. Um, and then I had many friends from Brooklyn that I grew up with that was here. So it's like five generations my goodness. of friends and families that knew each other from Brooklyn. Um, I know that um, Alma, not Alma, uh, Artif and I were in the um, Girlfriend's Cotillion together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that, that's way back. We were like 17, mm. you know, six, 17, 16, 17. Yeah, I think we were 17. And we were in the Girlfriend's Cotillion. There was, um, you know, we just all knew each other from parties. And, and church. Church, and, church and, yes. and things like that, you know. So you, have your, you had your group of teenagers now that are grown up to adults, but you also had aunts and uncles. You had this intergenerational going on here. Yes. What do you remember most about you know, the events that happened in this home? Oh my goodness. I think the biggest event that we had here was Battle of the DJs. Oh my goodness. So it was Long Island versus the Westchester crew. Oh, wow. And we would have a lot of parties in the basement. This was really, this has always been the open house party house. Yes. And so all of my friends could come here and they could come inside. Oh. <laughs> so wow. this was the fun house. Um, we were all very careful when we were cutting through yards because we knew that whoever lived in that house <laughs> yes. knew our parents and, we, and the phone call would get back before, before we did. got home. <laughs> yes. So um, it was just a nice feeling to go down the beach and people would say hello to you. You didn't necessarily know who they were, mm -hmm. but you knew that they knew your parents. And so it was always very respectful um, and you felt safe. 
Wow. And well, when they had the Battle of the DJs, they blew out all the lights in the whole community. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and of course, the girls were up here with the hair dryers, and oh, they bought yes. these big uh, speakers, speakers and turntables. Turntables, so it blew out all of the electricity for the whole area. <laughs> so this house has also been used for fundraisers. Has there been someone that you hosted a fundraiser for that other people didn't think it was their favorite, but they won, and you were one of the first? Yes, Eric Adams. We well, hosted a uh, fundraiser for him. And we also had um, fundraisers here for Helen Marshall, when yes. she was um, the borough president, borough president, yes. American borough president. Then we had some some local and some local um, folks and, too. You know, that who was the other guy that we had the big party for? Um, you had a couple for Wrangell too. I yeah, we did something yeah. for Wrangell. We've done for, Rangel. for a lot and of we people. Also yeah. for Dinkins. Dinkins, that's right. we did. That's yeah. right. So yeah. I was in here a lot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what? There's legacy. There's another generation. You've been out around for five generations. What do you hope people remember the Arringtons for? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Definitely hospitality. Mm -hmm. Definitely the opening our arms to old and new people coming into the into the area and and to that sense of family that sense of yes. you know people walk by come on in have a drink or come on in swim in the pool there's definitely a, a feeling of comfort here family here extended family yes yes yeah. yes my husband loved the idea when he would pull up on uh, fridays when, the, when michelle was like 12 with her whole group and they would be sitting on the stoop Mm -hmm. And he just loved the idea to see all the kids together, you yes, know. Yes. And they would be calling him Uncle Earl. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so Marissa, now this was like the small beach, the Bay Area. Are you ready for the big beach, the Sag Main or the East Hampton Main Beach, or does this beach still satisfy your needs? Um, I like this beach too, but I like all the beaches in our oh. area. So you're able to go around? Yeah. All right, that's wonderful. Now you're carrying on your father's legacy. You're mm -hmm. now a realtor, a successful realtor. Mm -hmm. What is it like? It feels fantastic. Um, I have, you know, this is home for me, right? So this is, I live here, so it's yes. a little bit different um, than I think some of the other brokers who are selling homes all over the place. Mm -hmm. This is, this is home. So um, I love the idea that lots of younger, uh, families are interested in being part of this neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, and that's across the board. You know, the, the the children playing on the beach, and you see all shades and colors. Yes, and and that's what it's about. Exactly. It's 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 um, it's about creating a place where people are, where you have a true community. Um, so I'm happy to be a part of that. So we drive in. It says a historically African American community, Azurest. What do you want people to know most about your experience as an African-American woman family in Azurest? Well, I think we felt very comfortable here when we first came. Uh, before we built, the children were going to the Cornaria camp mm. before we built the house here. So we used to send them there for the summer. She was like five years old, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's been out here for oh, years. And, um, you know, then we felt very comfortable. Even when we were building, there were some of the people that we really didn't know, but they knew, I think, of our families, because both my husband's family and my family were from Brooklyn. I love and it. so a lot of the people knew them from, you know, way back. Yes. And they started inviting us to, di we would come out and they would say, oh, we're having a party on Saturday, or we're having a party, you know, inviting mm -hmm. us to different events and things. Yes. And so uh, we felt very comfortable here. In the beginning, like Michelle said, there were dirt roads. We would sleep in here with the doors open at night. Yes. Nobody thought about anything, you know, we just, it was country. Wow. And um, these windows were wide open. Mm -hmm. You can feel the love. Thank you for opening it up for me <laughs> as well. And Marissa, what does black history mean for you? Is it important to be part of a historically African-American community? Um, yeah, I think it is because it'll be used like for later generations to keep the memory out. Do you think you'll bring your family out when you have one? Probably. All right. Well, one last thing. What would you want people to know about black history, how its significance to you? You're a realtor, you're a part of a family of five generations out here. What would you want people to know about the significance of a historically African-American community? I think what's so unique about Azure Est and the other, many of the other communities here is the fact that we are the original. There wasn't anybody here before. It's not like a Bedford Stuyvesant yes. or a Harlem. We had this originally, and that's why it's so critical 
um, and so important that we maintain that. This, mm -hmm. this, this was an area that no one else was interested in. And so um, I'm very proud and um, I'm very thankful to be here and be a part of it. So I know the beach is calling. It's Azure Rest. It's a beautiful day. Can you look into the camera? We'll do it together in unison. Yeah, in unison. Happy, Happy 75th. Azure Rest. 27 years ago, my family and I, young family, two little boys and husband, we went to the house next door on Meredith, and it was the home of Mrs. Weber. Well, then I went to church and I was in the church with another Mrs. Weber who lived to be over 100 years old. And today we are in that home with her grandson, Terrence Weber. Thank you for having us in your home. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for documenting uh, the history of the community. So now I'm holding four generations of Webers in my hands. You're the third generation. Tell us what you remember about your grandparents coming to Sag Harbor. How did they end up here? Well, it's, it's a rather interesting story. Um, my grandmother, one of her girlfriends, her family had a place out here. My grandfather had just uh, recently purchased a new car. And uh, that friend of my grandmother's was eager to get out to visit her family. And my grandmother and my grandfather were eager participants to get her out there. So they all jumped in my grandfather's new car and off they go to Sag Harbor. They get out to Sag Harbor and... Uh, they drop off my grandmother's friend with her family and they're on their way out and they notice the water. Yeah. And my grandmother's saying to my grandfather, like, wow, I wonder if, you know, are black people allowed to, you know, purchase right? property, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by the water? And, you know, my grandmother told my grandfather, turn around, go back. I, I want to find out and inquire about, you know, how these people got this property. Yes. And, you know, long story short, they found out that there was, you know, land for sale. And uh, my grandmother brought my, my dad back out. And between my dad, my grandmother, and my grandfather, you know, they decided this is a great place to go ahead and, and buy some land. So how many years ago, I have a picture of your grandparents here. Beautiful grandparents. So how many years ago did they buy out here? Um, that was in... Uh, 50s, I believe it was the early 50s that they actually purchased their first plot of land, which was the land that this house sits on. Wow. And uh, it took a few years, and then uh, my dad actually built this house with his own two hands. Oh, that's amazing. You know, so like, it was really weird. There was wood paneling on this wall mm -hmm. my entire life. Oh my goodness. And then once I inherited the house and, and, and was modernizing, we took down the wood paneling and my father's handwriting was on the wall, you know, where he, yeah, oh where he was doing the math yes. to cut the, the panel. Oh, how so, wonderful that is. You know, it was, yeah. a, it was a crazy little memory. You know? So you seem to have a wonderful life here, a boat, you have a wonderful profession. So what's it like? You came up with a group that a lot of you are still very close now yeah. in your 50s or, or older. What was it like, your early remembrances of being on the beach? I think we have a couple of beach pictures of the, you. That, that's me yes. in Pampers oh, on my the goodness. beach. On our Azure Rest beach. On Azure Rest oh, beach. Oh, my gosh. I've spent every summer of my entire existence in Sag Harbor. Oh, my goodness. And how wonderful. And this is you and your grandmother? Yeah, that's me and my grandmother. One of her favorite little restaurants was this little local spot that was on the Napiak Street on the way to Montauk called Cyril's. Okay, and yes. And Cyril was a really good friend of my grandmother and her aide. Mm -hmm. My grandmother's aide for many years was Cyril's nanny for his kids. So Cyril and my grandmother had a really great relationship. So we used to go there. I used to take her there for lunch and she would get her little... Uh, her uh, dirty banana little uh, cocktail, little <laughs> I love little it. rum floater, and her and Cyril would sit and, and reminisce. I love it. And you so know? she lived to be over 100 years old. Was it 102? She, she passed uh, a month before her 102nd birthday. Wow, and she was so sweet. I loved her. And so what do you remember in terms of the black presence? You know, you're a black man. Having a safe space like Azure Rest, Sag Harbor, what's that like for you? Well, you know... I grew up in the generation 
right before Yo MTV raps. Yeah. So being black really wasn't that cool yet. Mm -hmm. And then myself, like most of the kids that I grew up with, if during the summers out here, we grew up in predominantly white neighborhoods mm -hmm. and were educated in predominantly white schools. Yeah. So this was that place where we could actually, you know, everybody understood why our hair looked this way or right. how it felt. You don't have or, to defend it or yeah, apologize. Exactly. Yeah. And we could really just kind of be ourselves. And, you know, without any true judgment. And, and it wasn't like, you know, my white friends were judging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's more like they didn't know. There's a cultural abyss there. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So. Perfect word, cultural abyss. Um, so this became like our safe space. So as a little boy, do you remember the streets not being paved? Absolutely. And Absolutely. so what kinds of things did you do for the sun? The beach, of course, is a place. What else did you ride bikes? What we, else did you we do? We rode bikes. We built forts. Like, like this whole corner wasn't developed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was all woods. And in between us and Harv's house, um, which was not the next house over, but the house after that, there was a huge blueberry patch. Wow. And we used to pick blueberries and literally eat wild blueberries and raspberries and build forts. We had a huge tree fort, you know, mm -hmm. on the lot where that house is now. And, you know. Yeah. We just would go, good, on clean yeah, go on adventures. Yes. You know, ride dirt bikes and the mopeds and get in trouble i got a lot a of lot trouble. of trouble I, I can see that i can see that so but now, good clean trouble good clean trouble and so that's why we're sitting here today so you've made the decision to live here year round um or i actually did that um for the time period when i was staying here with my grandmother okay like i spent the last 10 years of my grandmother's oh, life with my grandmother mm. and you know a lot of people, you know, were all wondering, like, when's Terrence going to grow up? Okay. And it took my grandmother, you know, mm -hmm. to get me, I don't know if I've ever really grown up, but to get me mature and doing the things that society says I was supposed to do, like owning a business and things okay. of that And you're nature. doing really well, really well. well. I, I've, I've so what fortunate. kinds of things did your grandmother talk to you about, about Sarah Carver? Did she talk about... Like some people play bridge. What was your grandmother's pastime? Uh, what did my my grandma like? Was like collected a lot of tchotchkes. Okay. Um, she had she had her dog and her cat, which were her babies. Yes, I remember. Um, mm -hmm. she was she was very active in the church. Very much so. You yes, know, she yes. was really active in the church, and she was really active at least the last ten years that I spent with her. Were getting me like right with business. So what's one of the lessons you remember? One of the best lessons your grandmother taught you? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you. Like, you know, I had spent the last 10 years, or six years, excuse me, before I came back here, working on a blimp crew, just traveling. So I was on the road for like 300 days a year. Yeah. And when I got back here, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. She had been in the hospital a couple times. And she said to me, she was like, you know, hey, listen, Everybody's married. It's just you. You're wandering the, the earth like like a nomad. I know that's not what you want, but you're doing what you got to do. And, and yeah, I understand and respect it. She's like, but, you know, I'm getting older. I need a little attention. I'll tell you what, if you spend a little bit of time with me, we'll work something out, you know, with the house. And I was like, we, we don't have to do that. It's not about that. But you got you know, to spend 10 years with yeah, her. Yeah, she was really good. I mean, my both my parents had passed, and she she was, you know, my rock. Mm -hmm. You know, when I needed an extra 10, when I, you know, I was broke yeah. and needed $10 to get through the week. Yeah. That's who I called. So your parents owned the home next door. Exactly. And, when and when so, they divorced, mm -hmm. my mom sold it and moved to Texas. But my parents also always owned a piece of this house. Which was awesome. Which people didn't really, you know, not a lot of people knew that. But So we call this the village of Sag Harbor. What's the village for you? What does that mean? This has always been kind of like that place where... This is always my happy place, to be yeah. perfectly honest. This is just that place where I could just be Terrence. 
and every parent is everybody's parent. It, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and everybody, especially when I when we grew up out here, it was you know, you know, you know, do something wrong, and everybody got a swat. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> With no questions asked. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, and that was before we had text messages, it, but the messages got back. It, it was clear, it, you know. <laughs> it, Terrence is wilding on the beach. <laughs> By the time I got up the hill. Uh, this my mom was sitting there with the belt ready. <laughs> <laughs> I do understand. I do understand. What do you remember about the um, the founders? Do you remember the founders? Um, their family or their or their descendants? Well, they, well, I grew up with their descendants. Right. Mm-hmm. So I grew up with the Richards, mm-hmm. you know, clan, mm-hmm. and but they were, you know, like all of our parents were all together. Yes. So yes. the founders were really. They were my grandmother's, you know, peer group mm-hmm. or older. Right, right. So, you know, actually they were a little bit older than my grandmother, to be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so we kind of, you know, grandmother kind of came in between. And then their ch- all children were my parents' mm-hmm. peer mm-hmm. group. Mm-hmm. So I kind of went through a lot of iterations of what Sag Harbor is and and how Azure Est has has grown and developed you know so i've kind of seen it all that's awesome you know from eating you know beach plums on the beach to the campfires to the fireworks exactly which is awesome. to fishing with my parents the water ski like you know now you you know they've got the beach all kind of carved up and they've got the waterfront all kind of carved up where it's outer moorings inner moorings and then there's a channel we used to water ski no more in between the beach and the moorings <laughs> yeah <laughs> during high tide yeah you know that was you know when i was a kid you you know only white people you saw on the beach were the nuns wow from doing cormaria their, yeah from cormaria doing their morning walk or you know the only boats you really saw out there were you know the scallopers yeah yeah so nikki giovanni has this poem what shall i tell my children who are black so I'm just going to paraphrase that. What will you tell the next generation who are black about Azure Est? Preserve it. You know? Mm-hmm. It's a special, unique place. Preserve and it. And if you give it away, you may not be able to buy back in. Wow. Wow. You know. Well, this is our 75th anniversary. So I'm going to invite you to look in that camera with me. When I say three, two, one, we're going to say happy 75th anniversary, Azure Rest. And then whatever message you want to say to Azure Rest for raising you as a young man. So three, two, one. Happy, happy 75th, 75th anniversary, anniversary Azure Rest. And any last message to Azure Rest? It's yours to lose. Respect it, protect it cherish it wow and we thank you we've been sitting with terrence weber in the weber home and he's a third generation but there are four generation of webers that's w-e-b-e-r without a second b and that's because they're so bold they don't need another b and we thank you for joining us and i am delighted ignited excited to be here with marianne whitehead and how long have you been in San Harbor? We came out in 1947. Wow, <laughs> yes. awesome. And um, you live on the waterfront in Azure In Azure Before that, we lived on Hempstead Street. So so Hempstead was popular, huh? Very popular. Yeah. Okay. That's where we first rented our house on Hempstead Street. And uh, we rented there for three years until my father built a house up on Hempstead, on Hempstead Street. So, oh, wow. so how many generations have been coming? You have children and they, and they have and children? They have children. Yeah, we've been coming ever since then. We haven't missed a summer in Zag Harbor. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, well, you're my neighbor. We're in the village of Azure Est yes, of yes. Sag Harbor. And so tell me a little bit about the history of Azure Est. Well, when we first came out, there was no Azure Est. Okay. <laughs> so, and then we came uh, in around 1950. We saw this road, this road, this, and that was Azure Est. So, oh, wow. And so my, my father and my grandmother bought lots in Azure Est at that time. So. Mm-hmm. That's what they built a house. My so, father built a house in Azure Esk. So there's a rock in the parking lot uh-huh. um, on near the beach saying more Terry and her family helped actually establish Azure Esk. Right, yeah, they did. Yeah. Okay. Did you know the Terry family? Oh, yeah, we, we all grew up together. We all grew up with them. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. So I don't know if you first remember when I saw you because I used to walk in the mornings and yeah. you would drive. And then you would also be going into New York to Abyssinian Baptist Church right, for choir yeah. rehearsal. <laughs> so how important is faith to you? 
It's very important. I, I miss going into the, the Abyssinia and singing in the choir, but I got to find a church out here. <laughs> yes. So when we talk about frontline faith, what kind of faith is needed for America these days? I, I don't know. <laughs> what is, is, are you hopeful? I'm, I'm very hopeful. Maybe, maybe now things will change a little bit. So anyway. <laughs> okay. So now when you got this letter of sayings, Sad Harbor Hills, Azurest, Nineveh, and subdivisions that we have been now designated historically African American community, how did you feel? Very, very good because we first came out here, I, we were from New Jersey and so in New Jersey, you, we couldn't go to the Jersey Shore because we were segregated. Mm -hmm. So we came out here and, and it was just perfect because we could walk around, do what we wanted to do, ride our bikes, go to the beach, you yes. know, things that people can't do <laughs> normally. So. so this is reflections and remembrances. Yeah. What was a highlight for you as you remember? I know it was a wonderful community for you, but is there a highlight that stands out? Because well, every summer was, was a highlight, really. Okay. <laughs> I mean, so uh, we moved out here, uh, my husband and I moved out here uh, in 19, uh, I guess 1988, mm -hmm. full time. So we left here, I'm, I'm out here full time. So, yes, yes. <laughs> so that's the highlight. I guess the highlight is every year, every, you know. <laughs> so since you're year round, mm -hmm. there's like an ebb and a flow and a tide, whatever. So there's a time that, like near Memorial Day, there's a wave of us who come in. That's and right. then Labor Day, there's a wave. That, so do you anticipate, like, this is going to be a great summer? And what do you do in between the summers and the winters? What well, do you the do? Winter, uh, the winter, I, I was going to Abyssinia once a week to sing in the choir and, and go to the church on mm -hmm. Sunday. And that, but I, I, I still go to New Jersey. To, uh, to the family funeral home to do some work, so okay. I do that. And okay. I work at home too, so that's that's two days out of the week. And I'm in the Choral Society of the Hamptons out here too, so I sing in that group. So oh, really? I'm pretty busy. You're very very busy. <laughs> okay, so tell me about the Choral Society of the Hamptons. Well, it's 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 mostly um, classical music. Okay, <laughs> so that's great. It's, it's different from Abyssinia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. you don't rock and clap. Band, no, no. no. kind of stand and just throw it cold. Every once in a while, right. every once in a while, they do the podium <laughs> or something like that. But usually, it's um, classical music. So yes, I yes. Both, both things. So now, we, tell us about your family, children. Okay. We know one of them certainly. Yeah, Colson, my son Colson, who's my daughter Anne, mm -hmm. and uh, she has a house in Azure Yes. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. and Chip. Colson Chip has a house in East Tampa. Is it East Tampa or <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Sag Harbor? Awesome. Yeah. So how did you feel as a mother? Of course, he's an author and he's a very famous one now. How did you feel about his books and the receptivity in terms of the nation? Well, it's, I'm so proud of him. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Because being a writer is really hard, you know. And finally, he, he made it. I mean, he really made it with the uh, Underground Railroad and then the Nickel Boys. Yes. So he's done very well. So I'm very proud. So I have another son who passed away last year. He, he worked at, he did out here most of the time and he worked out here so sorry for your I have loss. a daughter Lynn who's a nurse and so she she loves it out here too so. Oh, <laughs> so. so what did you what makes you have holding on power what makes you through all these generations what gives you holding on power what would you say is necessary we have to have faith really mm -hmm. we have to have faith and you know hopefully that things will get better hopefully yes <laughs> you know? yes so. What would make a difference for you in terms of these generations that are coming into Santa Barbara? Do you see differences with, you know, there's now now a few generations later, do you see differences or what would you tell the newcomers? I, I see in? differences, but I just hope they hold on to the place, really. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Yes. Keep it. <laughs> yes. Know, really. Try to keep it in the family. Keep it in the family, yeah. So. What do you want to say to Renee and her husband, Edward, in terms of helping pull Sands together and the team? They're doing such a great job. They really are. All of you all are doing such a great job. So. Well, we have you to thank to all of our elders. You have been so so warm and welcoming to all, us. You know, my family was not a Sad Carver family historically, mm -hmm. but when we came in, we just feel like you're ours. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, and, and that's so important to so, us. So we keep it, keep the whole area the way it is right now. So. How did you feel Labor Day weekend? The historic photo, everybody coming together. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I couldn't walk down the beach. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, but in terms was, of the that buzz great. that was in the air, that was great. Yeah. Okay. Do yeah. you go to the Labor Day party? 
I, I went to the Labor Day party. Okay. <laughs> tell me, tell me a highlight for that. Did you did you dance? No, I, I, no, <laughs> okay. I came. Okay. No, somebody, did you come back? Did you come back? I came. You said wave your cane in the air. Yeah. 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 Like it, it was great. It's, it's, great. Yeah. it's a great tradition to keep you know mm -hmm. bring everybody together and see everybody. You know, so yeah. what would you want a message to your children, your children's children, and the generations to follow? What's important for them to know? To please keep us keep keep Sag Harbor the way it is. I mean, keep it, make it better. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's what I would say. <laughs> so faith is a formula. So if I had to put A plus B plus C equals success, you're a successful woman. Faith is one of the components. What's another component? I don't know, really. I mean, Fam is family, the family, faith and the family. family, you know, and and uh, faith in the family, and keep keep me everything, keep me keep me happy, keep it, you know, make everybody happy. We are really grateful for your presence in Sac Harbor and Azure Rest. We're grateful for your presence today, and we want to thank you so much for being so warm and so personable. And the next time you pass me, you can give me a ride. I used to say I don't want it. I know. Now I'm getting older now. No, I need the ride. So you can honk your horn and I'll jump in. But we want to thank you so much for just being so wonderful and lovely and embracing. And I want you to join me in thanking today. So thank you so much for joining us. This is Conversations with Ambassador Sue J. See you next time. We are at the home of the Davises. So you are our first outside interview. So thank you for inviting us to your home and to your porch. So we are with, tell us your name. Ron Davis. And? Beverly Davis. Lindsay Davis. Eden Roberts. All right. And so we have three generations right here. But you have been here for several generations. Lindsay, we've seen you on the beach with your cousins in different areas, Nineveh and Sag Harbor Hills. So what was it like growing up out here as a young child and now a woman? Well, I guess I would start with the idea that where we grew up, I was felt at least like I was always the only, the only black child in um, the school system and various activities that we did. But through church and Jack and Jill and coming out here, it was a totally different experience. And one where to me, you know, from a young child, I grew up seeing black excellence. Yes. So there was no surprise. It was just commonplace, really. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was such a positive, subliminal message that the black people were excelling and doing it all, yeah. doing it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that certainly placed a seed in me of, of just what was possible. And so I think that that was such an important foundation. So every time I hear you do an interview, you always give homage to your parents, parents of excellence. So black parents who built out here, built homes out here, Ron the dad. What was it like for you? You started, how did you find San Harbor? How did you find Azure Rest? When did you start building? Well, let me go back to Tina. Um, growing up in a town where actually my parents, my mother was the first family in Teaneck and going to school, black family, black family in Teaneck, and going to school, there weren't people that looked like me, believe it or not, in Teaneck, New Jersey. Mm. Uh, it was just my sisters and myself in the school system at that time. Um, but in 1962, uh, I was a junior in high school, and Labor Day weekend, um, I was fortunate enough to have a neighbor who would visit the Shinnecock Canal. Yeah. She was a Native American, and she convinced my mother to let me go with a group of guys that had been in New York, in the Brooklyn area, that had migrated over to Tina, and we were going to go to Sag Harbor. So that was my first introduction to coming to Sag Harbor, which when I got here, I just couldn't believe that black families at that day and time had summer homes. Wow. And so to see people water skiing, playing bid whist on the beach, it just blew my mind. And so I left there that weekend saying, if I could ever rub two nickels together, I'd love to have a family in Sag Harbor. And how many years ago was that, roughly? We built our first house. Actually, I was an educator at, at that time, uh, my first profession. And at the school that I was teaching at, they had a program there where they built houses for and, and auctioned them off to the uh, teachers and the counselors. And I 
got the house in 1976, came out here, sent out 200 letters to people who owned vacant properties. Wow. And bought my first lot for $4,000, unbelievably. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and uh, erected the house. And after that house was, oh, I said, is that all there is to building a house? Sold that house and then went to my homework that I had done and bought the next lot for $6,000 and then constructed the house with my brother-in-law. So we're happy to have you now. Wife, you're here. Your family is here. You have three generations. What's it like for you, Beverly? Coming to Sag Harbor, what was it like? raising your family out here? I loved it. I was a school teacher and the last day of school we'd pack up the kids. Well, no. When we first came, I was expecting our first daughter, who's uh, Whitney, yes. who couldn't be here today because she's working. Yes. But um, so that was in 1977. And they just, fell into the, the, the lifestyle. Well, 1977, I was born, so 72, Whitney. I'm sorry, yeah, I was 71. expecting Whitney in 1971. Right. So that's when, um, uh, that was the second year we came. Mm -hmm. The year before that, um, we, we rented. Okay. Two, a couple of years before that, we rented. I'm kind of losing That's the okay. chronology. That's okay. I have two lives. A lot of things. Because uh, it's, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, very long time. So, so we, then, um, you know, there were kids in the neighborhood, kids on the beach, something they didn't have yes. uh, where we lived in Medford, New Jersey at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, they've just had the Sag Harbor experience. They were both essentially born into Sag Harbor. And... Um, now they have their children, their children come, and their families, and it's it's just the, the Sag Harbor family, black family experience. And if I could just add, because my dad talked about the first two, this is his third house that yes. he built. Yeah. This has eight bedrooms. He's always built houses where the, it was a communal, the whole family, so yeah. all of our cousins, all of our aunts and uncles yes. would be able to come and, and stay. And subsequently, two of my cousins have bought houses mm -hmm. out here, and they're yes. raising their families out here. And as my mom expressed, you know, around the block, I grew up with Tracy McNeil. Yes. Um, she now has a son, Miles. Right. Um, I have my son, Aiden. And so the beat keeps going on generate from generation to generation. It's awesome. Well, in fact, your family was here. The last time I was here on your porch, it was a hurricane and it was a blackout. <laughs> yeah. And your sister, Ron, prepared all this food. We brought all of our food from the freezers uh, yeah. on the grill. Yeah. And so it's been a very communal, welcoming place. So you, you grew up with Tracy and Whitney had friends of all ages. Oh, yeah. And we've seen you on the beach. And what was it like for you and Whitney as sisters growing up on the beach with other girls and boys in the neighborhood? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Many of them were a part of Jack and Jill. So yeah. I would see them out here during the summer and then maybe during the winter or the teen regional and that kind of thing. My sister was here last weekend. It had Kimberly Taylor, who yes. she grew up with. Yes. Maia is still like her lifelong friend who they ended up being roommates in college together. And so it, I think it has just been life beyond friends. It does become just a, a, an extended family. Really. Very much so. We call it the village of Sag Harbor. So it very much is a village. Now we see you certainly on television, but you also had a Sag Harbor connection in terms of your career. Well, who was it that you oh. met here that led you to your path? Right, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So at the uh, the Labor Day block party, um, Charlie Shorter, who's a good family friend, knew that I wanted to be a journalist. At that point, it was really just kind of an ambiguous thought that I had and um, wasn't really sure exactly how I was going to go about doing it. It can be very difficult to get your foot in the door. At any rate, when we were at the block party, he said, I want to introduce you to this guy. He owns a bunch of TV stations at Don Cornwall. Yes. And I hadn't really thought much about it, you know, and I just kind of told him. He asked me a few questions. He gave me his secretary's phone number. Fast forward maybe a year to that moment, I ended up getting my first job in, in Syracuse that he coordinated, mm. and, and the rest is history. Well, what's up, Liz? So what, Nikki Giovanni has this poem, What Shall I Tell My Children Who Are Black? What do you tell people about Sag Harbor, about our cultural history, our African-American history? What would you tell people about Sag Harbor who are having children for yeah. generations following? 
I would say it's about ownership, ownership of who you are and sharing that. I would say it's about um, the, uh, it's about generations coming together, overlapping and enjoying all that, that uh, this heritage yes. brings. Um, it's about friendship. Yeah. It's about family. It's about love. And because uh, our parents used to come. Wow. They, um, yeah, when we had uh, all of these homes up to this one, they would come. And it's so different now. Yes. They would bring uh, ice chests of cooked food. Oh, wow. Cooked food. Or they would bring uh, food that they could prepare. So it was really um, an eating and loving and connectional experience. And grandma would fish, of course. Oh, and my mother loved fishing. Awesome. awesome. So uh, we have 40s. pictures of her, you know, for, with the counting 40s. the fish. <laughs> I love it. And um, of course she would cook them. And the guys would go fishing. I'll never forget, and they, in Montauk. Yeah. And they would get tuna. Mm. And then either we had it here or we took it back to Teaneck. And I remember um, my brother-in-law, Belinda's husband, they're both deceased now, but he would, they would grill it or my, and my mother would uh, poach it mm. and make fresh tuna fish salad. And so there's all of those wonderful, just loving memories. And yeah, again, I'll remember. use that word connectional because everybody would come here. Yes. All my sisters, their husbands, our children, and then that went into their children, our children's children. Yes. And, um, you know, the little ones ask, who ask, are we going to Sag Harbor? Can I go? You know, and, and just hey. fun, happy memories. So, Ryan, if, I know that there are a lot of intergenerational, but there are also co-educational things. You play a little bit of it with. Yeah. What else did the men do? What did, what's one of your memories, the fondest memories of what the men did? Besides fishing, what else did you enjoy doing? Playing horseshoes um, and then going back to fishing, if I may. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, 30 years of owning a boat and then fishing, going out and fishing and crabbing. Clamming, muscling, and wow. I would lo just love bringing those um, items here and, and cooking having, them. And cooking them. That's right. Well, thank you, Ada. How yeah. old are you now? Seven. So, what do you like most about Santa Barbara? Uh, downtown. You like going to Main Street? Yeah. Okay. Do you like the beach as well? Yeah. And seeing all your cousins and playing in the water as well. Yeah. Great. So do you hope that you can grow up out here too? And maybe one day bring your family? Okay. You would like that? <laughs> so Lindsay, what's it like now? You're raising your family out here and you come and you have another generation. What would you tell the generations now in terms of why it's important to have an Azure Rest? Why it's important to have a Sag Harbor? Well, I, I think it's very rare and unique to have this sense of community. I know that other locations exist and in many cases it's been disbanded you know mm -hmm. like in Idlewild in in Michigan and and some areas in in Martha's Vineyard and certainly in South Carolina mm -hmm. um, and in a number of cases you know the property values go up and then yes. you know the black families leave for mm -hmm. whatever reason or, or circumstances and so I think that um, to continue on with the as you um, you've mentioned before when you first come in you're greeted by that that Azure S sign yes. with the historically black neighborhood. And I, I think that, that there's something to, to be saved there. I love it. So if you will look in the camera with me, I want each of you first to just say one thought to people about Azure S, your fondest memory. If you look in that camera and just say one thing, why Azure S is important. Mm -hmm. I love the Labor Day races and growing up, you know, running in the races. My son now runs in the races and just that sense of, you know, people dancing in the streets and laughter and you know just people who you've known from when or they've known you from being a little child and um it's just i i don't know any other place where i could 
have experienced such a a rich heritage and you know now to to pass that along to my son as well so a safe space and joy filled space Beverly what would you tell people the importance of Azure S to you the importance of Azure S to me is a collection of of pride and a sense of our history and the richness that it provides for us again and I'll use that word generationally um, and a sense of our own power and strength I love it fortitude. for me it's a sense of um, becoming together with friends and enjoying their relationships um, and if I may just say this the saddest Someone that we used to rent from out here said the saddest story told was when you had to leave Sag Harbor. Wow. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a three, two, one. And if you will all look in that camera and say, we are the Davis family and happy 75th anniversary Azure S. So three, two, one. Look right there. We are, we are the, the Davis, Davis family. family. Happy, happy 75th, 75th anniversary Azure S. And we are in the home of the Cotmans, 44 Walker Avenue in Azure S in the village of Sag Harbor, the town of East Hampton. And we are celebrating our 75th anniversary just about. So thank you for doing this interview. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine, even though the weather isn't. But it is Sag Harbor, so we live with it. So now, how long have you been in Azure S? How long has your family been in Azure S? And how many generations have been in Azure S? Okay, this house was built in 1956, so my first summer, full summer was spent in 1957. Um, we're not part of the early migration, mm -hmm. those folks who came out from 47 to the mid-50s. But, um, from 57 on though. So oh, yeah. That's the year I was born. So I know how many years you've been here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I moved in the year of the 50th anniversary of Azure S. So we're coming up on the 75th year. What are some of the memories, the precious memories you have of Azure S? Okay. The 50th anniversary, I was president of the association and that was the first time we celebrated any anniversary. I think that the most important thing that has changed changed between the 50th anniversary and this anniversary. The community has changed in many ways. Um, it is not as small as it was. It is not as family connected as it was. It's still Azure S, it's still Sag Harbor, but we can feel the change in the community. But that's everywhere. So. Everywhere, exactly. Yeah. So I want to thank you because when I was moving in, you were president. And I had two little boys and you helped us to have our first children's party in the yard where all the village yeah. children could come over. So I want to thank you. And when my son's rites of passage, when he had to take his driving test. And I don't know where our car was, but you let us use your car. You were using it. Okay. <laughs> you were using it. <laughs> well, thank you. No, but you were in D.C. Yeah, I was in D.C. Okay. But I want to thank you because... Because those, that's what makes it a village for us, you know, raising our kids here, knowing that they're moms and aunties that are just so generous. So you've raised your family, and now I see Serafina, you're raising grandchildren out here. What do you remember about raising kids, the Sean group? Because there's a whole lot of kids around there. Sean group is the, is the Sag Harbor family. Those are young, those young men and women, and they're now middle-aged men and women. Mm -hmm literally grew up as one family. I yes. mean, as especially I had boys. Uh, they moved as a group. They went to the park camp and they moved back from the camp back to the community, from the community every day to the beach. We all sat on the beach as a group of mothers. We watched each other's children. When someone spoke, they spoke to everyone. Yes. Uh, our kids were never monitored. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any place for them to go, but between the communities, they walked between the trails. They walked into town. And what are your son's names? Uh, Sean, who's my oldest son, Serafina's dad, yes. and Evan, my youngest son, who is in California right now. 
He's now, like, I understand there used to be some discos that the guys would uh, oh. make sure happen. Talk to me about what happened with the sons. We were lucky as a whole community, the East End. Yes. When the kids were like 13 or 14, there was literally nothing for them to do as they grew up. Um, and some gentlemen over in East Hampton noted, not just for us, but they noted there was nothing for these kids to do. And they had a club. And they opened the club one night a week. Thir Tuesday night when all clubs were closed, mm -hmm. it was teenage disco night with the ball and everything else. Oh my. And we would just pack up every kid and go over there and come back home and wait. And then whoever was going back with an empty seat, you pick up the kids, you bring them home. How wonderful was that? Now, there have been many rites of passage since you've been as your rest. You've, yeah. You now have lost your husband. You've had a transplant. How did you make it through, and how did the community support you through those times? The community and my friends, we have pictures of the same group of women. We've been friends together raising our children for over 45, 50 years. Mm. Uh, they just support. And they call. They... They, no one knew I was going to have a transplant. But after the transplant, they all came together. When my husband died seven years ago, every kid that grew up out here, every male child and almost every female, I mean, all of it, mm -hmm. they were not only at the memorial service, they helped to put it together. Yeah, I remember that, how precious that was. So when you come to the beach and we see this group of now kids, adults now, um, they all honor you as, as kind of a village mother. How does that feel? Sometimes it's it's a little daunting when you someone is calling you mom mm -hmm. who has gray hair, <laughs> has lost their hair. <laughs> yes. Uh, and it's like, well, wait a minute, I'm not that old. But I am that old. Uh, but the boys and the kids just... I guess we gravitate. Mm -hmm. They, uh, I was the mother of boys. I had boys. Yes. And coming through, it's just I guess it's just my personality, but it's really gratifying. You feel really good in the end. Oh. And there, there are kids who didn't even continue coming out, but have come back to visit and just brought their kids over to meet me. And I, I said, well, I didn't know I did anything, but. They bring them over, and I'm happy to see them. So now we see Serafina, a granddaughter, uh, who we've seen literally from in her arm in the arms stroller, and now swimming in our bay. What's it like raising another generation out here? I feel as though our parents should just feel such pride and in, in that we were able. To they gave us this whole lifestyle, this whole thing, and it's still here. Um, folks, I appreciate that this community has given my children the opportunity to have a Tom Sawyer childhood. Yes, yes. I'm like, this is not a camp. Right. Kids didn't, our kids didn't go to camp. They were here. Yes. And they could roam these woods. They could roam into town. And I can say that there, even if there was de facto segregation, mm -hmm. it's not something that affected them because they didn't realize it, that they could get on their bike, ride to town. As they got older, they would ride their bikes to Amagansett to go to the beach and roam through the woods. When houses were being built, our boys were in those houses and even the contractors used to leave them <coughs> nails and wood and stuff so they could build. I have pictures of house, tree houses that these boys built. How wonderful was that? You know, and that's it. Their connection is just like that. And in need, whether they come or call, it's wonderful. Were your parents able to be in this house? Oh, yeah. My, my house was built in 56. My parents died in 1985, and they had already moved here to, for, as year-round. So you had four generations that you've been able to experience as your rest. Yeah. 
So coming up on our 75th, I'm going to ask you to look into the camera and say happy 75th anniversary as you rest. And if there's some thought you'd like to do uh, for a closing thought, let us know. But I want us to do that together. Happy 75th okay. anniversary. Three, two, one. Happy, Happy 75th anniversary, anniversary as you rest. Thank you, Andrea Cotman. This has been wonderful. Thank you for having us in your home. You're very welcome. Hi, we're here in the home of Fitzgerald Jerry Bramwell. And we are so excited. We're getting ready for the 75th anniversary of Azure Rest. And who better to, than to speak with, with one of those who was one of the originals, the third house built in Azure Rest was Mr. Bramwell's. Thank you so much for seeing me, Dr. Bramwell, actually. That's correct. Thank you so much for letting us in your home. Tell us about the beginnings, third house. What was it like in Azure Rest in those days? Azure Rest was really quite interesting in those days for a lot of reasons totally different from what you see right here. For one thing, we had lots of different animals all over the place, lots of different insects, dirt roads, mm. okay? And when it rained, the intersection of what is now Milton and Richards Drive became a lake, an impossible lake. What? Okay? Oh, wow. So that was a real challenge. Um, so how, what was the age when your family was here? How old were you then? I was just five. Five. So you remember playing with the te the Richards family, and you remember playing? A lot of these families were all good friends before coming out here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Iris Richards was a classmate of my aunt. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy Spaulding was also one of the important founders of Azure West, or at least one of the people that's very important with respect to the development of Azure West was my godmother. Um, and Mr. Jimmy Smith, right across the street from us, uh, was a developer. He was living, I believe, in, Bron in the Bronx at the time. So before they came out to Azure, mm -hmm. there were relationships, and then they moved out here, and then they were even deepened, I would say. I would say that a good third of Azure right now involves marriages and close personal relationships and friendships of people out here. So when there were dirt roads, what did kids do? Uh, what, were, what were your fun things to do? A lot of things were kind of fun. Uh, we had our bikes, so we could go biking anywhere, anytime. Um, a lot of us took uh, various swimming lessons. And uh, although I did mature into a fairly good athlete, at the time, before I was 12 years old, I actually had a license as a senior lifeguard. Oh, now, what, what makes that kind of interesting was, because I was a senior lifeguard at 5 foot 6, 110 pounds. Oh, and I was thinking, how was I, how was I ever going to pull an adult <laughs> out of the water if I had to? Yeah. Um, there were uh, sports which were around that we could involve ourselves with. And we had our own contests and what have you. Other than swimming, what was your favorite sport? Um, well, I was here. Without question, uh, I like baseball. Okay. So now you have a, an interesting history. I mean, history books have recorded you. Science books have recorded you. So far. So what was your... Half of it's true, by the way. <laughs> okay. And tell us what was your favorite position. And tell us what you aspired to and then who you became. Um, I aspired to being helpful to my community and being able to create and discover new knowledge. That's, that's what I really always wanted to do. Now, like my sons, we've only been here 25 years, so we're really newbies in Azure S. But how many years total have you been here? Well, that's a good, good question. I would say something like 71. Wow. In fact, it's longer than that. That's not right. That is not right. 74. Before coming here, my um, godmother... Dorothy Spaulding and Ed Spaulding had a house on top of uh, the hill up here. What's it called? Uh, just back here. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's where I took my first steps as a child. Oh my goodness. So now we're newbies. We moved in on the day of the 50th anniversary. Everyone was in the parking lot. What are some of your favorite memories of being here seven decades plus? 
Uh, there's so many I can't even uh, begin to talk about all of them. But I certainly enjoyed water skiing. I enjoyed fishing. I enjoyed racing Terry and Freddie Richards with my boat against their boat. Oh my goodness. If it was clean and glassy smooth out, they were faster than I was. But if it was bumpy, I was faster than they were. Okay, okay. So, so it depended on the water. It depending on the water, yeah. They had a 13-footer, I had a 16-footer. And that extra three foot made me heavier, so I was okay. a little bit slower in glassy, calm water. But in, on the, the choppy white, days? When the white caps were out there, I could... The way was an advantage. So as my sons, you went to boarding school, and there was a significant time that you took education seriously. What happened at boarding school that made you say, I better get it together? Oh, hell, long before boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. You'd have to check out. You need to check out the uh, bibliographies and everything about my mother. That's okay. important. Yeah, okay. the first African-American principal. One of the first. One of the first in... City New York, of New York. Yes. City of New York. And then you have to talk about my father. You talk to us. So, who was your Who was your father? And my father was. Um, my father was Fitzgerald Bramwell, and uh, he waited for his second son to get give the name Fitzgerald. His mm. first son got the name Jonathan. Okay. Second son got the name Fitzgerald. He was a chemical engineer, and uh, nobody would hire him. Wow. Yeah, he was one of the top students to graduate from a place called Cooper Union. I don't yes, know if you know about that I school. do. Donna Marie Barnes mm -hmm. went there as well okay. from Nineveh. Okay. okay. But he was, he was a top graduate in 1934. Couldn't get a job. So finally, as the war came on, he became too valuable not to have a job. And um, as a result, he uh, was employed as an electrical engineer. Uh -huh. And he discovered all sorts of, and created all sorts of things that were important for the war effort. I mean, critically important. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> as a result, after the war was over, uh, this clown from Wisconsin, what was his name? The House on American Activities uh, guy. McCarthy. Yes. Yes. Sent his little henchmen. I remember those people coming to our, uh, to our, House. Wow. But there's so many happy memories here. So we call this the village of Sag Harbor. And for mm -hmm. me, Sterling Village, and certainly meeting you, I thank you, and I'm honored. What makes it a village for you? Just about everything. I can't think of anything it didn't. One of the things my father became was one of the first harbor masters for Sag Harbor. And um, I got to see everybody and see all the different boats, mm -hmm. and understand how the harbor was put together. And one of the weird things about this place is that it's a village which is essentially split in half with a Southampton side yes. and an East Hampton side. Now, most of us here live in the East Hampton side, but yes. there is a Southampton side to the village. So your father was one of the first, he was the first African American harbor master? I would think so. I think he might have been the first harbor master. Yeah. I don't know, but he was one of the, he, was one of the, he certainly was probably the first African American harbor That's master. significant. That's significant. Mm -hmm. Our community is somewhat changing. It's certainly different than 74 years ago. What do you, what are your hopes for the village of Sag Harbor? And particularly Azure Rest? Well, my hopes for Azure Rest lie in the fact that we have some very brilliant and useful and intelligent people. So brilliant because they're not afraid, they're fearless. Mm -hmm. Intelligent, look at their resume. Just look at the resume, period. Mm -hmm. um, and it is my hope that they will be able to translate this into the appropriate political action which governs the happiness and the quality of life yes. which we can afford to have here. Well, I am honored to be in your presence and in your home. I thank you for inviting us in and allowing us to do this for the 75th. If you will join me and just look in that camera and just say happy 75th anniversary, Azure S. So when I say three, two, one, three, two, one. Happy 75th anniversary, Azure S. And this has been a wrap. We've been with Fitzgerald Jerry Bramwell, the third house in Azure S. 
and we are so delighted to be here. Another generation and a mentor for all of us. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, and we are celebrating the 75th anniversary of Azure Rest, and we are in the home of the Rees. Thank you, Rebecca, for having us. Thank you so much for having me. So your parents built this home from the ground up. You were coming here summers as a kid, and then your family built this home. Tell us what it's been like to be a resident of Azure Rest. Well, it's been a, a wonderful experience. Um, we've enjoyed many, of course, many summers here. Uh, the house was built in 1980. And um, the outside of it is a traditional salt box shape, which is if you go through town, it's very reflective of this, the home, the early homes here in Sag Harbor. My mother, um, she didn't design the house, but she sort of just picked the style because mm -hmm. she just thought it just kind of, you know, fit in very nicely with, with Sag Harbor. And we've been enjoying it uh, quite a bit coming out here. So you rented, your family rented several summers and then the family found the land. So you, when you came into this home, you were a college student? Yes. What basically, um, what it was is that my father was looking for some place, I guess, to go, you know, by the shore and fish because mm -hmm. he liked to go fishing. So he looked down at the Jersey shore. He also looked up, I think like in the Martha's Vineyard, Hyannisport area. And somebody had recommended to him um, that they had a place here and would maybe he should come and look out here. So yes, we did rent in the area actually down, I guess it was on Hempstead, we rented from the same family for many years. And then my father went ahead and purchased the land that this house is on now from someone, I think it was two sisters originally owned it, but he purchased the land from them and then my parents went ahead and built the house, had a builder out here and they built the house. So now I see you on the beach with your family and with your fr circle of friends. So is that your favorite thing about Azurest? Yes, that is one of the, the favorite things is the beach, the beach community. Um, it just, Azurest, I know for me and my family, it's just a symbol of relaxation and, um, you know, just coming together to enjoy, you know, to enjoy the environment and enjoy it with, you know, our longtime friends. And you inspire us, those of us who need to exercise. You do Zumba classes and about to do some other kinds of Zumba. Talk to us about what you do to inspire women to exercise. Well, I became a Zumba instructor many years ago. I had taken a class and I just enjoyed it. And they recommended that I, you know, become a Zumba instructor. So I did that. And then I just thought it was a nice way for people to get together in the community. So. Um, the, the nice thing was a, a couple of years ago we had our driveway paved, <laughs> yes. so that made a nice surface. Uh, previously before that I was doing it on the beach, uh, but I was a little concerned, I guess, about the, um, the, the balance of the sand for people. You know, you, yes. you really have to worry about your balance doing that. So I was having classes here in the driveway and I expect to um, run some again before the summer is over. And I've also been requested to try to do an aqua zumba class, so that should be interesting, you know, interesting in in someone's pool to um, have a class again, you know, just a way for the community to come together yes. and, and you know, fellowship and and stay healthy. Well, sign me up. I'm going to be in that one, the aqua one. So talk to me. We come into our community as a historically African American community. Yes. What does that mean to you? Is that important? What's the significance? Well, the. The significance for me is just the fact that the community itself has been here as long as it has and that people have established, you know, friendships and long term relationships here. And it's just wonderful to have that like sort of like as a constant touchstone in, in one's life. So that that's what I when I see pull up in on Milton Avenue when I see that sign it's just you know it's it's home that that's what it symbolizes to me and it's intergenerational so you have your parents so you're retired now from dentistry yes I'm retired now from dentistry so do you plan to stay in Sag Harbor and hope the future generations of your family will come here as well well um, yes I been have been enjoying my retirement we are here you know during the summer and I do hope, um, out of my family, I'm the one right now that comes out here the most. Okay. I do hope that perhaps my, my other sister, and I've been trying to get my mother out here. She's still here. She's 94. She what? just turned 94 in June. Mm. Um, but sometimes she does say the car ride is a little long for her because sure. we are in, in New Jersey. But yes, I'm, I'm hoping that the neighborhood will continue and just the, just the... the the flow and the vibe of the, you know, the historic and just going on to perpetuity. I hope that goes on. Well, nice. thank your mother for her vision of, and your parents for this vision. What's one of your favorite remembrances of your Azure Rest experience? 
One of my favorite experiences is that I remember is going clamming with my father out in the, actually right down off of our beach. Mm -hmm. um, I think we still actually have those same clam rakes wow. in the garage. And that, that was also very nice. And just with the fact that the family would come out, like we would, when we were in college and we would all come together, my parents would be here and, you know, all of us would get together out here and just sitting around the, the family table and talking, you know, driving out to Sagaponic, going mm -hmm. to the beach, you know, just oh, those, yes. you know, just those things. And then also um, the, the, the gatherings that we used to have once a year during Labor Day, you know, yes. down at the parking lot. You, those those always created like nice memories. I love it. Well, if you will join me and just look in that camera and join me as I say three, two, one, happy 75th anniversary Azure S. Three, two, one. Happy 75th anniversary Azure S. Hey, welcome. You're in my home today and we are celebrating 75 years of Azure S. I am so excited because usually we see them on the outside, but today we have the graves in the inside. So we have Gail, G-A-Y-L-E, and Joe Graves, who's our landscaper par excellence and our wonderful caterer friends, sisters, neighbors. Thank you for coming. Well, thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank so <laughs> there's a history here. So we're, we're covering people who've been around for a little while. Okay. And so tell us how you began. When you, How did you come to um, Sag Harbor? Right. Well, we used to spend our summers out here. We originated from Queens, um, Harlem, Queens. And then my father and another family used to travel out here in the summertime. So they um, decided that they were going to build out here. We used to spend our summers here, so we couldn't wait to get out of school because we knew we were going to Sag Harbor for wow. the summer. Okay. And um, we'd have to come through Riverhead because uh, Sunrise wasn't fully built yet. So the landmark was the donut shop? The donut shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you and lived ducks. in a tent? We lived in a tent when we got out here because the other family, the Brandon family, was yeah. building a home. And my dad and uh, Mr. Brandon were building their home first. So we put a tent up. And um, those were the best days. I'm sure. We used to have mm. to pump water with the pump. Yes. I remember walking through the wooded uh, rooms. And also my father and Mr. Brennan, they put cinder blocks in the woods. That was our... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 bathroom. Well, so, it was an outhouse out here, so yeah. that's okay. So now <laughs> your father's house ended up in Nineveh. What's now Nineveh? Yes. Okay, and so now how did you and Joe Graves meet? Yes. And, and when did you come to Azure S? Well, this was a blind date here. Okay. Yeah. My girlfriend, her sister was supposed to go on a blind date to meet her boyfriend's friend but she didn't get home on time so I went in her place right. and was that out it's, here or was that no that that's was in, in Queens in Queens, in Queens. Yeah. okay so yes. tell me so, the first well, time you saw you laid well, eyes on Gail <laughs> well I would just got off from work and I was like oh boy and I was doing mechanic work and you know mechanics can get pretty dirty mm -hmm. <laughs> so and I was she seen through all that dirt so I guess it was you know but then we we I washed up and then we we went out and then we got to talking, and then that this, and then now what? Then it's, then it's How many now, children later? Not, uh, five, five kids children. later, and, and our anniversary is like forty-eight years. Wow, five children, eleven grandchildren, yes. and how's it been? What's the key to marriage? Oh God, what's for you two? Well, you know, the first ten years could be a little rough, but you know, yeah, when you have fine. the Lord in your life, yes. you can get through anything. That's for sure. Awesome. And I mean, it was a learning. It's a it's a journey. Okay, it's okay. a journey, you and you take, have to stick to it and be yeah, intentional. Exactly. So, and Joe, now you've been other. you take care of my lawn and so yeah. many others. You've been in almost every house out here or every lawn out a, here. A lot of people. So, how many years have you been a landscaper? Oh, I was. I worked at carpentry work first. That's what I was going to do, and then I had a buddy doing the, the landscaping, and he, he bought he give me a bill for that price, then I said, okay, I can do landscape. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Monetize it, as they say, right? Yes, right. Yes, so now yes. you both have lived through a lot. Now you're in Azure Rest. When did you decide Azure Rest was going to be your home, and how many years have you been in Azure Rest? Oh, I would say over 30. Yes. yes. We moved in Azure Rest from Nineveh uh, when my last son was born. I think he was around right. nine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so over yeah. 30 years. Yeah, yeah. So now you have another generation. Another generation. Who's 
assuming the leadership of your home now, yes. the ownership yes. of your home, how does it feel to see another generation be in Sag Harbor, our Sag Harbor? I am blessed to have them here. Yes. I want them to see what we went through. Mm -hmm. And then you could tell the stories when you're sitting on the beach. We used to clam out in the water. Right, yes. Right. And um, they, lo they love it. They love it. Yes. And I'm hoping that when they raise their children, yeah, that they'll, they'll do likewise. Mm -hmm. So you went from a tent to now paying rent to yeah, your children. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so tell us what some of your favorite memories are as a couple, as a family out here. Joe, what's favorite memory for you as a family? Well, well when me and my family, we school when they started school i mean that was a task in itself and i hear you so, were really great with the basketball that's, with the guys. What, that's what we're going to so uh you know i got three boys so mm -hmm. with the basketball they and a girl yes uh, one girl played basketball too chill chill my oh. other one was a chili everybody oh, yeah. was, <laughs> and the other one was a track star Awesome. So they all well, athletic. Athletic, yeah. Okay. They very. I come from a, a nice athletic family, so which is awesome. And yes. I loved having you around with my yeah. guys. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. So, and Gil, what are favorite memories for you from the tent days, and then now as a family, having raised your family out here? Tell me two memories that are important. Oh to you. my goodness! Well, the beach is one. Sitting on the beach with my yeah. parents and the kids, and um, now that they're gone, and seeing them walking our shoes mm -hmm. and um, just be having the grandkids around and just, you know, loving them and being with family, just mm -hmm. being with family. So now you friends. both have grandkids that have finished college, yeah. one's yeah. about to enter yeah. college. What does it feel like to see now another generation being educated and what are your yeah. hopes for them? Well, just keep going and positive, think, you know, positive attitude and do what they got to do. They know they have to, you know, take care of business like, you know, we did. We did, you know, a lot of, a lot of sacrifice. You know? Yes. So, yes. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's just a, what they have to do. They gotta do. They gotta be. Gotta be adults. Yeah, they gotta be adults. Yeah, they gotta be adults. Exactly. And, 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 and do what they gotta do. And so. So, Gail, let me ask you this. What are lessons from Nineveh, Azurest, Sag Harbor that you learned that you've applied for the rest of your life? Oh, gosh. Let me think. Well, just uh, being friendly, being loving with neighbors. Mm -hmm. We have so many good friends in this neighborhood that yes. we can look out for each other. Yes. And that's what I want my children to do is to be looking out for the other kids. You see somebody else's child out on the street and... If they get hurt or give them inspiration, direction, just being a good neighbor. So this really is the village of Sag Harbor yes. in the yes. town of East Hampton. Yes. What's a village memory for you, Joe? Oh, well, oh boy. I, I'm glad that you're looking out <laughs> for me. The permits. The permits for every job you do. Yes. you got to go get a permit. It is something else. I tell you, it's, you know, it's, you know it's, it was a, a thing with me. So I... I Everything we sometimes we start the job, mm -hmm. and then the um, you know they, they interrupt your job when you say you got to get a permit. So, but that's, you've been that's, persistent and you've taken care of so many properties. Oh, sure. and yes. we thank you. And, and so still what's, at it though. Still at it, and, you know? and that's good. Do you plan on retiring? Oh, I mean, you're well, now on the reservation on Chinnacock Reservation yeah. with a truck with your daughter. Yeah. So it's intergenerational yeah. business. Yeah. Do you plan to retire, or what do you want to do? You know what? I don't think I'll ever retire. Retire. Mm -hmm. It does give you the energy. Yes. To keep it's, going. Yes. That's what it is. That's why. Because I when we moved out here, you didn't need permits. You didn't even have an address. Right. <laughs> you did, really, and we had dirt roads. Yes. So, and now the neighborhood is growing and growing. So now you need all the permits. Yeah. And <laughs> it's vibrant yeah, now. You gotta, you gotta have them too. Yeah. yeah. So, if you have one thought you would want to say to the founders of this wonderful community, what would it be? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the legacy yes. of our African American and history holding together. and and pulling together. Pulling together. Looking I, out for each I other. I love that. I, yes. That's, yes. that's what I love about this neighborhood. Yeah. That we work they, together. That we work right. together. And, and yes. speak. You got that. You know, my mother, I was raised. Mm -hmm. If you didn't speak when you were walking with my mother, 
you feel something. Oh, oh yeah. You on oh, your yeah. Head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wherever, so right? You have to speak. And that's what, you know, I find yeah. sometimes we need to, everybody have to speak. Even our new neighbors that yes. be getting yeah. that, mm -hmm. they need to walk and speak too. Yeah, yeah. because a lot of them are. Yeah. And I, I, I bring it on myself to, how are you doing? Yes, that's exactly. That's what I have to do. So exactly. I Even shouldn't have, have to do that. That's right. But it's all right. Do. But you're good at it. Yes, right. Even when we had our rough days, <laughs> we still came back and we spun around. So if you were looking to that camera right there, yes. and that camera right there, and what, what would you tell our founders? And then I want you to join me when I say three, two, one, and saying happy 75th yeah. anniversary Azure S. So what would you tell our founders? Our and founders, we just thank you for God's little acre. And, and happy 75 anniversary. So we'll do it in three, two, one. Happy, happy 75th, 75th anniversary, anniversary Azure S. Welcome. We're here today. We're celebrating the 75th anniversary of Azure Rest, and we're in the home of the Williams. Friends, neighbors, Azure Rest. Stephen Williams, will you introduce us to your family, tell us who's here, and then tell us also about your history in Sag Harbor. Well, thank you, and, and welcome to the home, and, and thank you for including us in the 75th anniversary celebration of Azure Rest. On the far side, I'm, on my left, is my wife, Barbara. Hello, Susan. And, Hello, Barbara. <laughs> and we've been married 38 years now. Awesome. And um, she's been here in Azure Rest for many of those years. So she's got a really good perspective. I Our son, thirty-eight of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, married, thirty-eight right? of them, yes. Okay. And and uh, is our son Michael, and uh, well. Michael carries the family name, his surname, and and, and the uh, name of the men. He is really the third Michael in line, and wow. my full name is Michael Stephen. My father's name was Michael also. Awesome. So awesome. he's part of our tradition, family tradition. So talk to us about the family tradition. When did you first come to Sag Harbor? Who was in your world? Your parents, your sister? Who was in the Sag Harbor world when you came out here? Well, I came out here when this house was finished. I was three weeks old. Wow. And um, my parents bought in 47 the land, and they completed construction in 53. Wow. And um, so I have always known, since I was opening my eyes, I've always known, Sag Harbor and Azure Rest as, as, a, as a kind of a retreat from the city and a place where I could really be free and, and move around the way I'd like to. My sister uh, was already a few years older than me and so uh, they had the house set up for uh, really her, them, and a guest room. I was a surprise baby. Okay. okay. I happened during construction, I guess. Right. And um, so the house is you know, it was built simply as a single family ranch. Uh, for the most part, it was for summer use. Um, and uh, in fact, one of the things they did retroactively was to install heating so that they could have a baby out here during the cold nights and awesome. et cetera, et cetera. Now your sister is Sandra. Sandra. Okay. Now I've watched you and Sandra, Barbara. I know your sisters in law, but you're really sisters in love. <laughs> and I see you um, grow up. So what are some of the memories? You came out here once you married, and you've been out here now 38 years, but now you're around. So what does Azure Rest mean to you? Um, growing up, well, getting married and living, and everyone, please forgive my voice, but I've got a slight summer cold. Uh, it, it meant a lot because uh, when we got married, we had a uh, brownstone in Harlem yes. that we moved into. Stephen had uh, purchased it from his grandmother. And it was so nice to get out of the city during the hot summers. Yes, yes. <laughs> and be able to come out here and just, you know, it was beautiful. And uh, it was just really made, it was like the best of both worlds. I loved my brownstone and living in Harlem, mm -hmm. but I loved coming out here as well. And I can remember Stephen's mother always being so happy that I liked Sack Harbor. Yeah, yeah. Which is <laughs> and she said, you didn't have to like it. And I said, no, not a problem. So it, it meant a lot. And then when Michael came around, it was, we 
we raised our kids out here. Yeah, summer, exactly. So. so, Michael, you and Sam and Chris have grown up together. You were one of our older young men. So what does it mean to you? It says Azurest, a historically African-American community. What does that mean to you, and how has it been? Um, well, I've always really enjoyed being out here and everything. Um, I would say back when I was, I'd say, five, I think, that we came out here pretty much every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and that was always a nice getaway from the city. Um, it's been unique adjusting to living out here full time and everything, but it's really been a great community. And, um, a and lot that's because less... of COVID you moved out here year round? Um, yes, mm -hmm. I was in San Francisco. Um, I was just going to come back for a week, um, but I was right when it, the lockdown started and everything. But um, it's been a lot less stressful, I would say, than um, living out in San Francisco or probably New York City at the moment. Um, but it's really been a great place to be. And congratulations so. to you. You have several degrees. You want to tell <laughs> us what you got those degrees in? Um, it was just um, a month ago, finished my master's degree at Academy of Art University in game design. We're so excited for you. <laughs> so Stephen, I understand your parents were quite the socialites. There were parties on the back porch here. And tell us some of your remembrances, your happy remembrances of your parents and you, and then certainly your family that you brought out here. Sag Harbor was a retreat for uh, a lot of African-American professionals, uh, doctors, lawyers, dentists, judges, teachers. And so uh, this was a place where they could come kind of away from, a lot of them were in integrated or barely integrated professional environments. And so they could come here and rela relax, kind of exhale. Mm -hmm. Tradition was that people didn't really keep their doors locked and that because they had a lot of common um, origins, yes. like his, historic black colleges and serving in the military, this was post-World War II, that um, it, there was an openness, there was a camaraderie and the, the, the commonality uh, kind of led to a closeness. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of them were friends in the city who decided to buy out here, have their post-war children here. And so it was open door policy. Sometimes you just knock on a door or bang on a door and say, hey, come in, have a drink, have yeah. some food, eat. <laughs> uh, so it was, it was always kind of a movement back and forth. And, uh, and sometimes folks like us would just show up and just come in. Absolutely, <laughs> so, which absolutely. Which wonderful, yes. Uh, my, my, I had a, a cousin who also has a house out here. And uh, when we were growing up, the, there were two cousins. Three of us would uh, get on our bicycles and explore. You know, mm. when we were 12 and up, even 11, we could get our, our, go, our bikes and go anywhere, down to the beach, down mm. to the ocean. Uh, and it was just a wonderful sense of freedom and safety. Yes, uh, yes. Well, I'm going to thank you. You're our president of our Azure Property Owners Association, mm -hmm. and when I moved in, it was the 50th anniversary of Azurest. Okay. Actually, you were in the parking lot, my my truck was moving my stuff in. <laughs> but for these last 25 years, have you seen generations now coming back and wanting to purchase and wanting to raise their families here? Absolutely. There, there, is, a, there is a strong tie to Sac Harbor because so many of the original generations and, and, and and Ray Redhead's father was one of the, you know, also very social, yes. dynamic leaders of the community. That that um, I think people get, you know, mature. They go to college. They might start pursuing their careers, but but I think they never can replace the environment they had here. So it draws them back. Yeah. So we have a lot of people, and my hope is that Michael and his family will will uh, stay here and we'll need to expand the house, but we'll do that. I love it, I um, love it. Because there's a real, we talk about intergenerational transfer of wealth. Yes. There's also that of here of community and of spirit. I love it. So Barbara, not only have we raised our sons together, we've, we've been in those vans taking them to and from basketball and sailing. The ocean. The ocean. But there's also been a camaraderie between the women. So how has it been as a woman, as a resident, and what do you hold dear? 
what I hold dear is really that so many people have retired out here. Mm. Because just like I missed it playing whist last night because of this cold, there's a real girlfriend. I mean, Cheryl will call and say, what are you all doing? You'll say, Barbara, let's go to lunch. Yes. Barbara North will pop up and say, what's going You know, so it's really been fun. I mean, you don't feel, I think in the beginning it was a little lonely, but now more and more of us are out here. Are out here. And we were friends in the city. We had our Jack and Jill with our kids. So Book club. We, yeah, <laughs> yes. we book club. So we, we have a real girls club. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, so it, it's, uh, I love that there are more and more people who've decided to retire out here. Well, we're so glad to be in your home. I'm going to ask this last question of you, Steve, our Azure West Property Owners Association president. What does a historically African-American community mean to you now? Okay, so it, it means that, as I said, people came out here to find commonality, to enjoy, and to separate themselves from some of the discrimination that was going on at the time. Uh, they created a community that they wanted to, the way they wanted to, and in spite of, uh, you know, lack of access to mortgages and bank loans, uh, a lot of them found creative ways to purchase and build their homes. And make it happen. And make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and that spirit has continued. Um, I think at one time, segregation uh, kept this an exclusively African-American community. Now that, that uh, those sort of lines aren't as strong as they are and we have new members moving in, but we also have a resurgence of that community spirit. That's awesome. And, and that's a really wonderful thing. New members are welcome, historic members are welcome, and I think um, this sort of uh, atmosphere will continue. And that's, that's really the depth of the history here, is, is the openness um, and the fact that uh, neighbors say hello. Yes. We have spontaneous conversations. It's a real ebb and flow and not isolation behind hedges or other things. Exactly. And all of them are our children. They're all of our children. Michael, Sam, Chris, all of them Absolutely. are our children. So if you'll join with me, let's say three, two, one. Can you say happy 75th anniversary, Azure Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Happy, happy 75th anniversary. anniversary <laughs> no, we're going to take two. Happy 75th, 75th anniversary, anniversary. anniversary. Azure Three, two, one. Happy 75th, 75th anniversary, anniversary Azure Okay, cool. You know, history is important, and we're sitting today at the Eastville Community Historical Society, and I am sitting with... Hi, Georgia Grierke, and I'm the Executive Director. We are so excited to be here at Eastville. We're getting ready to celebrate our 75th anniversary of the Azure S. And so I came in 25 years ago, but you are the keeper of history of this East End. Why is it so important to have a place to archive our history? Well, it's like, you know, if we are not here in the built environment, um, I think it's out of sight, out of mind. So while we have the documents and we have residents that live here, um, it is a private community. So I think having a place where we house the actual information, images, and archives is very important to have it housed in a place where the general public can come and learn and see it. So what's your role with Eastville? Well, my role is the executive director and chief curator, um, and that allows me to have guest um, curators come in and do shows and also allow artists to come and have a space where they can exhibit their work. Um, so we have a lot of poetry, we have writers, we have a lot of researchers that come in and like to do a lot of research about the unique history of how um, As Arrest and the other communities got started because it is a unique African-American story, but also an American story um, that many people didn't know about for years. And now it is a hot topic. Yes. Well, I'm proud to be a resident of Azure So when we come in, it says a historically African-American community. And it gives us such pride. When you have and you host the fish fry and 
call them in the Hamptons. What does that feel like to you when you have residents of Azure Rest and all of the Sands community? Well, the fish fry, um, and I must say the fish fry itself is celebrating its 36th uh, year while you are celebrating your 75th <laughs> year. Um, the fish fry itself is not just a local event. It's not just an event for Eastville as a rest or Sag Harbor. It's an event that is international. We have busloads of people that are coming from all over. This year we had a bus from Harlem come. Yes. And this is the year after COVID. Yes. Um, so we have residents that are international in our community that you know go to Israel and come back, that go to yes. Africa and come back. So this is an event that people look forward to coming, seeing their old friends and celebrating. So it is as much as it's about the food, the fish and the good food, yes. it's, it's much about the smiling faces connecting with people and, and the community yeah and the community in the hubs and generations of family and friends so, it's so let's talk about generations because not only is it international it is intergenerational we have babies in the arms and strollers up to the elders in their 80s 90s and some who are in their hundreds so talk to us about the generations you've seen flow through here in your years here oh my goodness it's so amazing and to me the connection of generations and when you see the elders uh, this year, I, I started to put that this table was reserved for the elders, mm -hmm. and I didn't do it, but they knew their table. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> and let me tell you, they were watching us, um, how we were carrying on the tradition that they started to preserve mm -hmm. this history, and that's why Eastville Community Historical Society even exists. They started because they wanted to make sure that we preserve what they started for us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why the fish fry started. And so they were sitting at that table watching us, um, making sure that we uh, were doing what they wanted us to do. And I didn't hear one complaint. Good. So I think that that was a stamp of approval on us. I think so too. Uh, so I'm really happy with that. But it's really for them to teach us about the connection to slow down a little bit, to have self-care, which is a word that they didn't use back right. then. But they just took care of themselves. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so they want to make sure that we have that, that we have a connection to one another. Um, and that this is another word that I love for them. Good to welfare. Yes. You know, that was on agenda in meetings. And yes. so that's something that they want to pass down to us. And today, these are buzzwords that you hear. So that was what the fish fry is about and looking out for the next generation and to make sure that there is something left for that next generation. Um, and totally. that's important. So I'm a mom, I, you're celebrating with your niece here who's doing some things. What do you want to say to the next generation about the importance of African American history? I think it's important for us to, stand, to understand our resilience, to understand that we do matter and we know that, but it's not enough for us to say that. It's more for us to understand it, but really take the time to slow down and to understand the history and to enjoy it while we can, to take a deep breath, learn our history, and to understand that it's not just you know, coming out here for the summer. Mm -hmm. It's smelling the roses, you know, having the weird stuff that, you know, we grew up with, you know, the, the lemonade, yes. you know, the fish fry, um, but also taking the time. You know, one of the things that I think happened over the couple of years is teaching hopscotch or double dutch. Yes, you know, double dutch. Could you do it 10, 20, 30, 40? You know what I mean? Yes. So those are the type of things and having the elders turn the rope and you know, those type of things, you know, we had out on the tables this time coloring yes. things and we had tic-tac-toe and you know, we want them to understand that we got the message. It is clear. We are a community of love, connection, kinship, and we're going to keep it going. So we're both from a faith community. So you started coming on the East End because one of your grandfathers uh, was a bishop. And so you came out here for the faith communities. So this fish fry started actually at the AME Zion Church. Talk to us about why it started there. and What's the significance of faith in this community's history? Yeah, you know, I think the the fish fry, chicken fry, and food in the church is synonymous. Yes. <laughs> okay, and, and I think this is the main reason um, that the Historical Society started. Um, Kathy Tucker, her mother, was going to the church, um, and she started to see that the, you know, the community started to die down. And they wanted to ensure that St. David AME Zion Church um, was on the historic res register for um, the Sag Harbor Historic District. Yeah. So the community 
got together and they went to the local municipality and said, we want to be included on the historic register. And they also raised the funds from initially from the fish fry to repair the church. The church is believed to be um, a part of the Underground Railroad. Yes. We do have documentation that the first pastor was a part um, of the abolitionist movement. Um, and now more and more we see that there is new research to understand that the Northern Underground Railroad looked different from other parts and the part of the maritime history that we do celebrate here. Yeah. So the faith community is such a big part um, in the Underground Railroad, the abolitionist movement, um, and our support of that church early on started because we wanted to have that history included in this history that is almost invisible yes. uh, when you drive past. So I also hope that you capture, you know, the first black diplomat, Ed Dudley's father, um, came from this area as well. And so we're celebrating, you know, I'm the first female, but there's a lot of black history in the diplomatic community from here as well. So not only am I talking to someone who keeps history, but I'm also sitting with someone who is history. So we want to thank you for preserving it, all the rich nuggets that you've given us today. If you'll join me, just look at that camera there. And as I say, three, two, one, we say happy 75th anniversary as your rest. Can you help me? Three, two, one. Happy 75th anniversary as your rest. We are, we are the, the Davis, Davis family. family. Happy, happy 75th, 75th anniversary as your rest. Happy 75th anniversary at 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 your rest. Happy 75th. Awesome, and thank you for sharing this time with us. And we're in Azure a historically African American community in the village of Sag Harbor. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bring me down, love us too high.